Welcome to Generator, your view into the ever-evolving and vibrant art scene in Ireland today. On this, the last show of the season, we have the sixth and final artist from the Generator Group exhibition, Laura de Burka. We chat about her grandfather's apple orchard and its current influence on her work. We profile Market Studios where Deirdre Morrissey and Claire Bean talk to us about setting up their space as a not-for-profit company and their connection with the surrounding community. Firstly, we join musician and artist Matt Hedigan at his first exhibition, 100 Portraits of Varying Degrees of Success, where we conversed about the challenges of setting up his first exhibition and the crossover between art and music. Matt Hedigan, I'm uh, part of the A4 Sounds Committee um, and we're doing a fundraiser here um, on the 28th uh, of my my solo work uh, but we're like we're, we're a collective and we work together and work with other people but uh, yeah this is my first kind of exhibition outside of college but it's probably a bit more of what, what I wanted to do rather than what I had to do in college but it's you know it's not very, um, not very intellectual, intellectualized or anything. It's just basically people sent in, sent in pictures of themselves, and I'm just doodling away. And uh, some of them are kind of highly finished, and some of them are just like with a marker and done in like 30 seconds. So hopefully it'll be a kind of fun and um, uh, like not too, you know, chin stroking, really boring. But I'm um, sure we'll see anyway. But uh, and we've got music as well on the night. Um, Rory Francis O'Brien with James Fortune, um, kind of a uh, kind of kind of creepy-ish folk, kind of somber. Uh, Onzi um, from Dublin, who we uh, um, who's been doing really well lately, and uh, delighted he could do it. And Katie Kim playing solo, which is amazing. And uh, I was really surprised that I got. That, that's the only three bands I wanted to do it, and all of them said yes pretty much straight away, which was very heartening. Like so, um, and no one really wants to see what I'm doing anyway. It's more that they're coming to see the, to see the music, which is totally grand as long as we make some money out of it and pay off our bills. And um, yeah, that, that's the other thing. It's the it's the we're looking to get money to kind of settle up with our landlord before they make this place into apartments, and um, then we're on the hunt for somewhere new. And it's still going to be a four sounds just somewhere else and um, hopefully we can you know uh, advance you know, get, 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 get to do more than we did here and kind of get more people involved and get more involved in whatever community we happen to be in when, when, we, when we move off. It's probably more stressful than, than I thought it would be but uh, yeah, uh, I'm not even finished yet and it's on tomorrow so that's, that's probably a good uh, <laughs> Good sign, or well, give, give, give you an idea about how unprepared I am. But it, it wouldn't be me otherwise, you know, unless I was all over the place and underprepared. For sure. So we'll see what happens. It should, should, be, should be fun anyway. <laughs> so let everyone enjoy their. <coughs> Long photographs being taken or drawings or whatever we call it. <laughs> it takes a little bit longer, although you were saying it took like two seconds to do something. Yeah. Or not two, twelve. Twelve, I'm sorry. Burning white dove, pull 
related I mean you know like 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 for example tomorrow like very often if you had this kind of thing like an art, an art like a small art exhibition you, you know you'd more than likely have some sort of music well I, like well I know that, that that's the kind of one that's the kind of exi ex exhibition I, I would I would I would favor like you know and it's just think you know if you're like um and like with, with like with, with with bands and stuff you know obviously like album artwork and posters is a huge thing like and like usually, I think in a, lot, in a lot of respects, music is often accompanied by art and vice versa, and it's they're kind of pals. Thanks. College, it was the only thing that I did all, all right in. Like was 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 life drawn. Um, I um, had major problems with them um, because I don't really I don't I don't really paint. I don't, I, 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 I I like lines and I like scribbling, you know. But that doesn't go down well in a fine art college. That's I you know that's you know illustration or whatever. But I don't know. Like I I wasn't really able to deal with the kind of. Everything having to be uh, really profound, you know. Everything you did have to ha had to have a really kind of profound meaning behind it, or like just if you if you if I said to my tutor, I just like if they asked me why why I did this or whatever, you know, I, I would say you know I had this basic idea, like a reason for doing it, and then I just then it, then, then obviously the aesthetics comes into it, and they were like, nah, gotta have a big big fucking essay on on what why you do everything, and I just don't have that in me, like you know, I just work away and hopefully things kind of come together. I just can't really, I don't really think about it in any other way other than that, you know. Like, I, like, because I really hated the idea that you had to be real, real smart to be, to be into art, you know, like, and he, like, and I'm not saying that they made me feel stupid, but like the, uh, I did feel like a bit like, I can't do this, if, like, because I, I don't know how to waffle about, you know, like a smudge on a huge canvas and be, be able to say that, that, or be able to, Say in a convincing way that that's, it's about world poverty or something. I just can't do that. Look, you know, I just. But I wouldn't want to anyway. You know.
I'm Deirdre Morrissey and this is Claire Behan and we run the Market Studios. We're up and running now five years, nearly yeah. six. We started in, well, so we opened officially as the Market Studios in January 2008. Yeah, it was kind of like a, we were looking for studios ourselves. We just finished a master's course and there was eight of us looking for studios and we just thought, well, we kind of shared spaces before in the past. so. It kind of evolved into the idea of setting up a gallery. We'd both finished the Masters in art curation. So it seemed like a logical thing to do that, to set up also a gallery space attached so that we could have a space to put on the shows that we were curating. Yeah, I so suppose when we, when we initially started, they, we had a much, um, we only occupied half the building. We had a much smaller kind of studio group. And then about six months in, I suppose, we took over the back space so this was all together at the moment, including ourselves, there are 15 artists here. Um, that's with all the studios full. And then the gallery space, we generally have exhibitions. Well, actually, we've had quite a lot this year. We generally have them about twice, every two months, would it be? Yeah. More or less, yeah. Um, and myself and Claire, sort of at the start, would have um, curated most of the exhibitions. Because we were kind of, as I said, we set up the, we kind of set up the gallery space because we wanted a space that we could um, develop our own practice yeah. as curators. But then, it's probably in the last kind of twelve months, we've been really given the gallery over to young, you know, to go guest curators, so people can kind of come in and you know use the space. So how the studios works is that um, obviously the artists pay us the studio rent and then what we make from that then we go to pay our landlord. And um, we're set up as a not-for-profit company so it means that any profit the company does make goes back into sustaining the studios or sustaining the gallery. Um, because we are set up as a not-for-profit company we do have a board of directors. So our board is made up of, of kind of arts professionals um, and they would kind of oversee the legal end of, of the company. So we, we have to present to the board any kind of decisions that we make or any, you know, to make sure that the company's solvent, basically. I suppose sometimes when you think about setting up spaces like this, because, as I said, you know, there's no, all the money that's generated just goes towards sustaining the space. So that means paying the landlord the money. So everything, like the grants that we apply for, everything is about either trying to maintain the building, you know, the structure, put on a program of interesting work enough, kind of find a way to either pay or at least support the practice of the artist. But I often think that even when art spaces move into areas like this, it's a lot about the gentrification of the space. It's a lot about, like if you think about how Temple Bar started off, you know, it was originally an old bus shelter, you know, and the artists mm. moved in there and it became, slowly it's become the kind of mess that is now. <laughs> I first came to the Market Studios in about 2008 and I was looking for a studio as an artist and um, came here and rented a studio for, turned out to be about two years and in that time I did two shows here where I was able to develop my practice and I completely expanded my practice here from painting into performance and installation uh, sculpture. Um, and then I recently came back to the Market Studios having um, encountered Deirdre Morrissey again, the co-director of the space. Um, I'd been living abroad for the past two years and she had seen some of my work online and invited me to come back and do a residency here for one month and to present a solo exhibition at the end of it which um, turned out to be more of a project and a working space for the next seven days.
all of the works in this space are um, related to each other in the sense that they are fragments of a whole. There are, they can be reconfigured and um, reassembled throughout the next seven days. There are combinations of materials that all become activated by myself and participants. Um, they contain, some of them contain sensors or noisemakers um, and objects and are assembled in various forms as the week goes on. Um, in effect, they all become performances um, that are both done by myself but influenced by my, my participants. But actually being in this area, because it's in the markets, is actually really nice. Like it's really, really busy and really vibrant in the mornings. Mm -hmm. But then all the markets close off at like one o'clock in the afternoon. So then it's just really, really quiet. So it is an, an interesting sp space to be in. Yeah. It's an interesting part of Dublin. This is all due for redevelopment and mm. the markets were going to move. And in some ways that's a brilliant thing because they were going to get, like if you ever see traffic here in the morning time, like there's a school directly across the road and no one can get in or out. Huge and, articulated lorries trying to take the corner. Yeah, and, but there's yeah. something about that that's wonderful and that's part of the city. And like if you're ever here mm. at six o'clock in the morning, they're like, and you're looking out the window and they're like little doozers, you know, in Fraggle Rock. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, they're in their... Um, so I think, I think it's important to kind of retain things like that in the city and even the fruit market, you know, and the fish market. There's so much history in this area. Like, actually, this area is, uh, like, there, there's no infrastructure. There's nothing really put into it for the communities around here. But yet they have such a um, sense of community, mm. the residents here. You know, like, we're, that was something that we wanted as well, to not be this kind of plop studio that you could put anywhere and it would still exist. We kind of wanted to be embedded. That's why even we called it the Market Studios, you know. Like we have, we've run a couple of projects with the school across the road and the Hacienda is a, possibly the most wonderful pub in Dublin. Um, you know, there's so much in the area. <laughs> Thank you.
visual artists and based in Dublin. I do a lot of illustration and I write loads of different things, but that's my favourite thing. I studied textiles, which is screen printing, which is my, my first love, but I, I'm just trying to get back to drawing now because it's the most satisfaction I get is from drawing. Yeah, well, I'm working on a book based on my father's apple orchard. They called it the Apple Garden, where he grew up in Galway. It was on a farmhouse, and my papa, his dad, used to win prizes for his apples in the local agriculture fair, which is amazing. I looked at the records, and there was all different categories like ornamental butter displays, best sheaf of barley, all these amazing kind of just the sense of whimsical, but my puppy used to win prizes for his apples and went to St. Jim Burke and desert apple. Because they were so good. It was a very vast orchard and um, it was kind of destroyed in 1963 by Hurricane Debbie. So it was just made horizontal. And after that, um, most of them died, but some of them were so old because they were there for generations before he, he enjoyed the orchard. And they still bore fruit even though they were horizontal. And he said they were the sweetest apple. It's just some kind of magic when he used to tell me about it. To send it so magical, so I wanted to document it. So I went and interviewed all seven of his siblings and did little audio kind of recordings and lots of little anecdotal stories around the that they used to play in the birds' nests and things. So I wanted to go illustrate it in a kind of it's kind it's kind of like a historical document really because of those kind of places are gone. And also the orchard itself is gone, so it's more like memories of the orchard. So it's trying to get a feel of um, hazy mistiness. It's obviously physically not there anymore. But the, when you start researching into something you think is quite specific, like Irish apples, you, know, you just discover that it's huge. And there's so much information on them. And the names particularly of the apples are so beautiful. And the beauty of bells. I have some here. Rusty goats, Kevin Cabbage Stock, Foxy Whelp. I don't know how they made them up, but they're, they just sound so medieval. The, there's one called Bloody Butcher as well. A lot of them were from our man things, but there was just the variety that's huge, there's hundreds and hundreds. I think there's over 700 varieties in, in the historical apple collection in the UCD. It's amazing. I'd just live there if I could. Oh, yeah, I illustrated two books for children in Irish that my friend Saif and Ian wrote and they were 2009, no, no, 2003 and 2006 I think. The first one was called Patchy Organ, it was by Little Bird, a paddler, who um, was like a coming of age story about the bird. But the second one was about a cat, so I kind of like drawing, I'm more into nature than or imaginary things rather than realistic, even though the orchard is something. That did, I prefer that kind of imaginary world to kind of, that inspires me a bit more than figurative drawing, realistic things. I just, I could do it if I wanted to, but it doesn't, it doesn't hold the same appeal. Because I like the kind of flat flatness of screen printing that you get with mix of drawing, but stencils are amazing. So I think that's how I got into cutting out paper stencils. And I just started using the bits that were left behind after the stencils were cut and tried making things with them. Because um, I did barely throw out anything. Um, but and spray paints, I love. I just like the instant gratification of instant colour. So I could never do oil painting. It takes on um, glazes. I'm more of an, I think it comes from studying screen printing because once you do the work and you have your screen exposed, you can just instantly create a piece which is quite addictive and it stays with you. So that's really probably informed where I work because I've always loved stenciling, which is way around. Well, it's, it's essentially stenciling. 
Okay, but it's such a lovely material to work with. It's a okay, it's a shadow and it's bendable. And I'm not very good at 3D, but I kind of cheap at a 2D folded. So it's kind of like a little bit of origami, yes, but real origami doesn't doesn't get cut at all. That's the best cut. But yeah, I like doing I like briefs, I like having a kind of idea and a theme and kind of because I studied design, I suppose it was all about getting brief, and I, that stayed with me. So I like to have a kind of story to work around, like the, the apple orchard, because it can, it can, it just gives you legs and brings the work on. I think. instant thing as well in Photoshop you can we I did I designed a lot of silk prints and I sold them for a long time in, in town markets and in an Irish design shop and they were basically that's kind of one of them that's nearly one of them and I would just use silhouettes and things and they look they turned out looking like screen prints I suppose I made them look so that's the aesthetic I really like and and I got so into Photoshop, I was doing design stuff for different bands and covers, and I loved doing posters. Although I love having a word and then a band, and you just listen to a song, get an idea, and then think for an image. It's just a lovely clean way to work. And it's just kind of one-off things, are just really nice. And, well, I love music, so that helps if you like, if you like the tunes. But if you didn't like, you do really crap cover. <laughs> No. Um, yeah, a lot of digital stuff, but I kind of try to get back to join because it's so much more, you get lost in it, you know, the time just, it's gone. And I don't really get that with anything else. Thank you. 